I have had this piece of ambrosia maple lying around for quite a while and have been wanting to turn it into a clock. I eventually found a cheap movement and decided that now was the time to make it. I first found the center point of the maple using a straight edge. I could then drive a nail some of the way into the wood. Don't drive it in all the way though. This is because you'll need to use a string to draw a circle around that center point. You could also skip the step of the nail and just use a compass. I then drilled out the hole in the center that would let the shaft that holds the hands for the movement through the face of the clock. The movement I got required a 3 8 inch hole. Next, an area needed to be removed so that the movement could sit inside the face of the clock. This would allow the clock to sit flush up against the wall. I never like doing this type of routing because there's no place for the chips to exit easily. They build up inside the area you're trying to route out, so you have to stop and blow out the chips very often. The sawdust from the router gets everywhere. This is what we here at Geek Out Hobbies like to call a shop shower. I can now remove the clamps and make sure the movement fits. Good, it does. Since I still don't have any bandsaw blades, I'm using my father's old jigsaw to cut out the circle shape. If you want to help me get some more bandsaw blades, you can head over to my Patreon, Teespring shop, or Instagram store. All links are in the description. Don't feel obligated to help me out though. The best thing you can actually do is subscribe, like the video, and share it with someone who you think you'd like it. Thank you in advance. Since the jigsaw is not a super accurate tool, I can use my palm sander to tune in the roundness of the circle. Since I have a moment now, I'd like to tell you about a collaboration I'm doing with two other makers. It's called the TriMaker Tournament. There's a link in the cards and the description to where you can find more information on this collaboration. I recommend you go check it out. It's open to anyone who wants to learn new skills and become a better maker. I'm definitely excited for it. I thought this was pretty smart. I used a bolt, washer, and nut to hold the clock steady while I did some trim routing. I mean, come on, look at that, that's awesome. I used a quarter inch bit in my router. 
I did this to hide the slight out of roundness of the clock. It also looks pretty nice. It did leave some burn marks, but those could be easily sanded away. I sanded and sanded, carefully contouring the round over, making sure the face was nice and smooth and made sure it had no scratches. I used 100, 150, 220, and 320 grit sandpaper. Did you know that some people call it emery paper? I did not. I learned that just a while ago. Using my air compressor, I blew the dust off of the face of the clock. This prevents little bits of sawdust from sticking into the finish and giving the clock a fuzzy feel. I drizzled on my favorite mineral oil finish and just look at that color pop. Now it's time for assembly of the movement in hands. Thank you so much for watching. If you liked this video, please give it a like. If you really love what I'm doing here, feel free to subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.